Merry Christmas. Hi, I'm Kenny Yates. Welcome to Hold the Hope. And this is Christmas Sunday. Today we're celebrating Christmas Sunday. Just a few more days will be Christmas Day, that long-awaited day to celebrate Christmas. We've been waiting all year long. And finally, it's here. And, you know, whenever it comes up, it seems like it just sneaks up on us and all of a sudden it's here when we've been waiting all year long for it. But we're going to be continuing our Christmas series entitled, Tis the Season. And today's message is entitled, O Little Town of Bethlehem. So would you please turn with me to Micah chapter 5, verse 2. But you, O Bethlehem, Ephrathah, who are too little to be among the clans of Judah, from you shall come forth for me one who is to be ruler in Israel, whose coming forth is from of old, from ancient days. O oh, little town of Bethlehem, the beloved Christmas carol says, it was written in the 1800s by Philip Brooks and Louis Redner. Brooks wrote the lyrics in 1865, and three years later, Redner put the music to the words in the Christmas of, of 1868. The first verse says, O oh, little town of Bethlehem, how still, we see thee lie above thy deep and dreamless sleep. The silent stars go by. He took the title for his song from Micah that was also echoed in the Gospel of Matthew in, in Matthew chapter 2, verse 6, and the Gospel of John chapter 7, verse 14. Micah said, But you, O Bethlehem Ephrathah, who are too little to be among the clans of Judah. First of all, Bethlehem means house of bread. Jesus, the Messiah, called himself the bread of life. In, in John chapter 6, verse 35, Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me shall not hunger, and whoever believes in me shall never thirst. It is not a coincidence that the bread of life was born in the city that's called House of Bread. God strategically planned every aspect of Christ's coming. And from, the, from before the foundation of the world, this was already planned. The, the revelation says that John looked and he saw a lamb as if slain before the foundation of the, of the world. See, we serve a great and mighty God. Our God is an awesome God. But not only that, God wanted to make sure that there was no doubt in anybody's mind who he was talking about, or what city, or what town he was talking about. So he said, but you, O Bethlehem, Ephrathah. God made sure that Bethlehem of Ephrathah was distinguished from Bethlehem of the tribe of Zebulun found in Joshua chapter 19, verse 14 through 16. It says, then on the north, the boundary turns about to Hanathon, and it ends at the valley of Iftahel and Katahath, Nahalal, Shimron, Idala, and Bethlehem, 12 cities with their villages. This is the inheritance of the people of Zebulun, according to their plans. These cities with their villages. So you don't have to say, well, which Bethlehem did he really mean? Which Bethlehem was he talking about? Who was the prophecy about? Bethlehem of Ephrathah in Judea, the birthplace of King David. The Bethlehem that belongs to Judah, the ancestral tribe of Jesus, Thus, Jesus is a lion uh, of the tribe of Judah, a descendant of, of, um, of Judah, the son of Jacob, the grandson of Isaac, and the great-grandson of the patriarch, Abraham. The next part of verse 2 says, From you shall come forth for me, one who is to be ruler in Israel, whose coming forth is from of old, from ancient days. From you 
O little town of Bethlehem, from you will come forth for me, one who is to be ruler in Israel. The word ruler indicates authority to govern, having the power or authority to exercise dominion or rulership over peoples or governments. But this isn't just any ruler, but rather it is one who's coming, in other words, who's origins or whose beginning is from old. He had no beginnings. He never had a start and he will never have an end. So no, this is not just any ordinary ruler, but one who is, is his beginning is from old. He never had a beginning. He's the ancient of days. This is the eternal ruler and only God is eternal. Only God is from old. King David was a great king. King David was a great ruler, but this ruler is even greater because this ruler is the everlasting God. The second verse in the song says, Yet in thy dark streets shineth the everlasting light. The hopes and fears of all the years are meant in thee tonight. Yet in thy dark street shineth. John says in John chapter 1, verse 5, the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. So speaking about Jesus, John says, the light shines. Jesus shines his light in the darkness. And no one, nothing, no darkness, no matter how dark it is, will never, ever overcome that light. And who is that light? Jesus said in John chapter 8, verse 12, again, Jesus spoke to them saying, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. In thy dark streets shineth the everlasting light. Jesus is the everlasting light because he is the light of the world. Without him, we all walk in darkness. And how great is that darkness without Jesus, our Lord and Savior. It is an everlasting light because it's an everlasting kingdom. Isaiah cries out in Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6 through 7, For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulders. And his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, of the increase of his government and of peace there will be no end. On the throne of David and over his kingdom to establish it and to uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time forth and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. Jesus' kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, a kingdom with no end. No other king will overthrow this. No other king will ever displace Jesus. No other kingdom will displace his rule. No other kingdom will be beside it. No other kingdom will succeed it. This is an everlasting kingdom. All power in heaven and on earth is given unto Jesus because he was found worthy. I want you to look at this verse in Micah. Micah chapter 4 verse 8. It says, And you, O tower of the flock, I want you to go and check out the mystery of the shepherds and our nuggets of truth, explaining the tower of the flock, also known as Migdal Eater. If you haven't seen it, just click that link below, and I am guarantee you, you would like it. But Micah says, And you, O tower of the flock, hill of the daughter of Zion, to you shall it come. The former dominion shall come, kingship for the daughter of Jerusalem. The tower of the flock was located just outside the city limits of Bethlehem. This is exactly where Jesus was born, as the prophet predicted. Now, this former dominion, Memph Salah Yad, the that, that Micah speaks of, means to rule. All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Jesus has inherited not only heavenly authority, but earthly authority also. Now, I want you to watch this. This is good. The ruler's staff was securely between Judah's feet until it safely passed to Jesus. Look at what Jacob said in Genesis chapter 49, verse 4. Verse 10, the scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver from between his feet until Shiloh come, until him 
shall the gathering of the people be. The scepter means an ornamental staff used as a symbol of rulership. So this ruler's staff will not depart from Judah until the promised Messiah comes and claims it because he has legally inherited this dominion. But if this former dominion also included the priesthood, which we know it did, does that mean that it, it goes back just a little bit farther? What I'm saying is this. Does it go all the way back to the time of Melchizedek, some 18 centuries earlier? I want you to take a look at, at Psalms chapter 110, verse 4. The Lord has sworn and will not change his mind. You are a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. God has promised on oath that Jesus would be a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Now this word order, it means cause. That is a legal case presented to a judge. So this priest has legal case or a legal claim on the priesthood. The writer of Hebrews said, Hebrews chapter 7, verse 7, 15 through 17, this becomes even more evident when another priest arises in the likeness of Melchizedek, who has become a priest, not on the basis of a legal requirement concerning bodily descent, but by the power of an indestructible life. For it is witnessed of him, you are a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Now, could Melchizedek's rule be a part of the former dominion spoken of here since Jesus is of the order of Melchizedek? So, Jesus does not have a temporary claim on the priesthood, but an eternal legal claim. Not from bodily descent, but by the power of an indestructible life. Now, let me tell you a mystery. Jesus did not descend from the Levitical line, which the priesthood belonged to, but from the tribe of Judah, who had nothing to do with the priesthood, the, the, the Hebrew writer told us. But someone will ask, well then, wouldn't Caiaphas then have a legal claim on the priesthood? Well, he did, but he, he lost it. He does it now. How? How? How did he lose it? Well, that's the mystery. I want you to look with me in Exodus chapter 28, verse 31 and 32. It says, make the robe of the ephod entirely a blue cloth with an opening for the head in its center. There shall be a woven edge like a collar around this opening so that it will not tear. Now, I want you to look at at what occurred during the so-called trial of Jesus, recorded in Matthew chapter 26, verse 65. Then the high priest tore his clothes and said, He has spoken blasphemy. Why do we need any more witnesses? Look, now you have heard the blasphemy. The high priest was instructed never ever to tear his high priestly garments. Let me reiterate that. Absolutely, under no circumstances was he to ever tear his clothes. God was so adamant about it that he ensured that it would not happen by enforcing the collar or enforcing it with a collar so that it could not tear. The high priest Caiaphas had to put extra, extra effort into tearing his garment. I believe that that was the point when the high priesthood passed from the tribe of Levi and from the house of Aaron to the tribe of Judah and namely to Jesus. Without even knowing it or knowing what he was doing, Caiaphas callously broke the forbidden law of the priesthood by tearing the sacred garment. He symbolically abolished the Levitical priesthood, and transferred the son of Aaron's most prized possession. The Levites now had no legal claim on the priesthood. You know, someone might say, well, 
This isn't really a Christmas message, is it? But of course it is. See, the snow's on the ground. Gifts are under the Christmas tree. There's jingle bells. Reindeers flying across the sky. Santa Claus is coming to the ground. But the greatest gift of all is Jesus Christ. So there you go. It is a Christmas, Christmas message after all. I want you to look at Isaiah chapter 7 verse 14. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel, which means God with us. That is the Christmas message. God has come in the flesh. God has come to reign and to rule in the form and likeness of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. He is our high priest forever in, in the order of Melchizedek because he has a legal claim on the throne. He has a legal claim on the priesthood forever. So praise God. Praise the Lord for the Lord has come. Let all the earth praise him. Let all the earth rejoice. Let all the people say, our God reigns. The long-awaited Messiah, Jesus, our Emmanuel, God with us, God in us. Jesus, our Redeemer, has redeemed us and his, with his own blood and has offered a free gift of life to each and every one of us. So in closing... I want to ask you this, this Christmas, have you considered Jesus? To be sure, Jesus has considered you. He left his eternal throne to pay the full penalty for your sins, to pay the full penalty for my sins. With his own blood, he purchased salvation for each and every one of us. Then he wrapped it up in a beautiful Christmas paper. He placed a beautiful bow on it. And he's offering it as an everlasting Christmas present. All you got to do is to accept it. The Lord has come. And he's offering you salvation. He's offering you life. So what will you do? Will you accept the free gift or will you callously decline? The choice is yours. Jesus has come. And if Jesus came, he's coming back real soon. Just like he said he was going to come to die for our sins, and he did, he said he's going to come back. The angel told his disciples when they watched him ascend into heaven, he said, Men of Galilee, why stand ye staring up into heaven? The same Jesus is going to return in like manner. Jesus is going to come back. He's coming back to get us. That where he is, there we shall be also. And we'll be there forever and ever with him. If you would like to know Jesus as Lord and Savior, say this prayer with me. Heavenly Father, Forgive me of my sins. I ask you this Christmas to give me the gift of life. Help me to serve you. Help me to be watching and waiting for your return. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. If you pray that simple prayer, the Lord is just. He will forgive you of your sins. He will cleanse you from all unrighteousness. All you have to do now is to begin to serve him. You got to start praying. You got to pray your own prayer. Get a Bible. Begin to read that Bible every single day. Highlight those meaningful promises, those meaningful verses. Learn them. Commit them to heart. Commit them to memory. Find a church, a Bible-believing church, not one of those progressive churches, a Bible-believing churches who still believe in right and wrong, who still believes that there is a way a righteous way, a right way. Serve in that church. Be discipled in that church. And when Jesus comes back, he'll find you doing what it is that you should be doing. And he'll take you to be with him, that where he is, there you shall be also. I want to thank you so much for joining us this Christmas Sunday. We appreciate every one of you. Thank you. 
Merry Christmas from our house and our family to your house and to your family. Merry Christmas. I'm Kenny Yates. This is Hold to Hope. Be blessed and stay blessed.